Hello, welcome back. This episode I'm going to do a bit of a project update. It's been a little while since I've done that. I kind of talked about our plans a little bit in the Q&A, but in this video I'm going to talk about how things have changed, what our focus has become, and I'll cover three areas. The stone house where we live in now, the white house, and also the land, the garden, and how we're working in those spaces. First, the stone house. If you're interested, you can take a look at the house tour video first, and that will give you an idea of what those spaces are, what's inside them, and where we live. The stone house is where we currently live. We're on the top floor, and that was converted in the 70s. Below that, there's a stables on the ground floor, which isn't livable, but it's useful as some storage, and it keeps the boiler in there, and so it's a bit of a kind of utility area. We always wanted to convert that into livable space, and we still do. But since we've been living in the stone house for over a year, we've kind of discovered different issues, different problems, and now we think that we'll probably have to just tear all of the renovation out and start again. The plumbing um, was done with some very small pipes and so it doesn't circulate the hot water very well. And the roof, this is not the roof itself, but the ceiling has little cracks in between the slats and it lets a little bit of dust out, which is very annoying to live with things, small things like that, but changing those things will, will just make our quality of life greater here. Don't get me wrong, living in the stone house for now is, is comfortable enough and it's, it's definitely a step up from what uh, Martin's managing to do living in a tent outside. I don't know how he's, he's done that for so long. But it, it does mean that we want to do a bigger project there. We want to do a bigger refurbishment and really take it back down to the basics and build it up again. So that kind of takes me on to talking about the White House. The White House has come back into our focus in a big way. We've been in to clean it up a bit and we've spent more time there just thinking about it, being in the space, imagining how we would live there. We really started to realize that the space is, is what it is. There isn't loads that you could or would change in terms of the layout of the rooms because it's got so many arched ceilings, these domed beautiful ceilings upstairs and downstairs. When you try and alter any of those, when you add bathrooms in, you've got to kind of cut across and do things like that. And actually we just don't really want to ruin it. It's also a space that works really nicely in summer. Where we live now, upstairs, it gets quite warm in summer, it gets too warm. But the stone house has thicker walls, it's, its alignment, its axis is different on the sun. So you get sun on the side in the morning but then in the middle of the day, it's hit the sun's hitting the side of the house, not the front of the house. And so it doesn't heat up quite as much, especially in the back of the house, it, it manages to stay much cooler. This is without us actually kind of living in there and adding our body heat and kitchen machines and various things to it. So that might be a bit different, but we, we notice it when we go in there during the summer. It feels really lovely and, and cool. The stables downstairs of the stone house also has that, it feels much cooler. And so we really want to keep those spaces as they are. And so now we're talking to our surveyor who lives locally about drawing up some very simple plans to open a couple of windows out to have a door that goes out the side into where the pergola area is that I, I looked at in the, in the last video. And then that's about it. I mean, we're gonna add one bathroom in to the top back bedroom because there, otherwise there would only be one bathroom in the whole house and it feels like uh, not, not enough. And, um, and then it's just about renovating. And we'd like to do that in a really sympathetic way. And by that, I mean using materials that were originally used, lime plaster, lime paint. We want to use stone fired clay tiling, which, which there is in the upstairs, but downstairs at some point that got taken out and uh, modern tiling got put in which isn't as nice. And so now that process begins. We are chatting with the surveyor and we're trying to work out what things we can do. We're, we're not builders, we're, we're not gonna be able to do the whole project ground up, 
but we will be able to do a lot of decorating. We might be able to restore some of the paint work in there. It's been covered with modern paint, but underneath there's a really nice lime paint. And um, then we're going to get some quotes from, from local builders and, and see where we are with that. We're hoping we can get started this spring, at least with the kind of demolition work to begin with. We'd like to take the facade off of the White House and reveal the stone underneath. I think it would be much more fitting if they're, they're both in stone rather than with this kind of concrete render. And so that's, that's exciting for us to, to think about that and to also envisage us moving into there and maybe having a guest space in there and starting to use it a bit more. It's been abandoned for at least 50 years. It's quite clean inside. It's not got damp and it's not abandoned in a kind of dusty, nasty way. But there is no heating, there's no water. So there is all of that to be thought of. And there's also the, the energy aspect to be thought of. Do we use a ground source heat pump? Do we use wood to heat the water? Do we use pellets like we do now? These are, the, these are the things that we're thinking about, that we're talking to our surveyor about. Now that we're closer to figuring out a layout in this house, we're just also trying to update the plans with things like kitchen, how that might work. So we're just propping some sticks up in different places to see what that might look like, see if we can fit a proper wood-fired oven in there which will also partially heat the house. Just see what's possible really, giving us enough space to have everything we need. Let's go through. Might go dark in here. L-shaped set of kitchen units and then in the front because there's already a chimney you can just see the opening at the top here that's a potential place to put a wood oven there's a little sink in the corner here but we'll probably take this out because this was once a nice window opening to the front I'll just spin around again so you get an idea of the shape of the room. There's the window looking onto the courtyard. There we go. So that takes us on nicely to the garden. And the garden really came into focus while we were mulling over these project ideas for the house building. Last year I had a gardener come in for two days, three days, no, two days. And that was a huge help just to see how much could be done in a couple of days and we cleared the slope behind and we removed the hedge that was sitting here blocking the view and I really wanted to build a retaining wall on the slope behind. There's a video on, on that as well if you want to rifle through the videos. Um, that wall never worked out. It was a project that couldn't happen. It was too expensive. It was going to be 30,000 euros to build a wall there, which I thought was crazy. Uh, but because of where it is, there needed to be a geologist involved. And so it became a bit more complicated. But for now, the earth seems to be holding quite well in, in this terraced part of the garden. And so I'm quite happy just to keep an eye on it and see how it is. And if we need to go there in the future, back to this idea of the retaining wall, then that's something that we'll do. I think I'm going to have the gardener out again this year. It was Guido plus two other guys and they did a great job last year. Lots of pruning and lots of clearing of shrub and kind of little foresty bits. And we'll do the same again and we'll focus on a different area and we'll do a bit of planting, some cover crop to cover the, the terrace, the bits where there's still some bare earth there. And then I think we've, we're really starting to have an impact here in terms of the garden, at least in, in front of the house. And that just, that feels so good. And so that's likely to be something that we'll continue to do. We've also started a, a new orchard and we've planted four new fruit trees, two pear and two apricot. And hopefully those are gonna do, do well over the season. There's irrigation going down there now and they've been mulched quite nicely. 
And so, yeah, fingers crossed that those, those do well. The orchard that we've got now is quite an old one. There's cherry trees and there's apricot and fig, and some of them produce well, some of them don't. And yeah, we would just like to, to grow that really, to have our own, our own bit of orchard on the land that we've planted to watch the trees grow. It's a good feeling. Otherwise on the land, let's also talk about the meadow at the end. At the moment, this area is not being used really. It grows some artichokes, which are perennial. They just come back every year. And that's, that's a lovely thing to eat those. But I'd really love to have a chicken coop down there to plant some more trees, not too, too close together, but some trees that would kind of work well with, with the meadow as well. And to have the chickens running free in a fairly large area, probably to be fenced off because we do have predators here. There's, there's various kind of bigger birds and there's also, the, the wolves actually managed to get down here from the Alps, which was really surprising when I arrived. There's some foxes. There's weasels and, and stoats and stuff. So yeah, we would, we would need to keep an eye on them and probably put an electric fence around them. And so I'm planning to build a chicken coop and a greenhouse to get the lemons in the greenhouse full time so I don't keep having to move them in and out. And I think that covers it for the land. We have eight hectares and I never know what to do with any of it, but I think I've realized just to sort of do what you can in the bits that you can. <laughs> And that's enough. If I try and if I if I think about all eight hectares at once, it's in, it's not possible to imagine it.